a number of different ways we can save an assembly part or drawing. We're going to look at, in this video, some of the different ways, um, such as save as. Um, there's five different ways to save. And as well as the pack and go function, and then the export options as well. So say we're working on a, an assembly like this, and we want to make an adjustment to uh, one of the parts, like this arrow head cap. So let's go ahead and open that part. So in this case, let's make an adjustment. You see we just have the arrow part open itself. Let's make an adjustment to the size of the cylinder here. Maybe we want a couple different sizes, head caps, to differentiate different models. So we'll change this to 0.4 or 0.675. So now that we've made the change, let's do a save. And saving would do just as you'd expected, right, right over the old file. But if we want to keep the, that old file, we're going to do a save as and just rename it here. Rev A. And I've made a folder here that we can save these two. So we're just using the save as. So what this is going to do is replace that, the old part with this new part in the, our working document. So from here on out, we're working with this new, new cylinder size. And the other uh, save options just depend on really what, what kind of workflow you have. So if we want to make another adjustment here, say we want to get rid of these, these fins. So let's go ahead and delete that. Okay, so we just have the cap. But we want to save this out as a copy so that we have that waypoint, so to speak, and then we'll continue with our modeling. And we, we can choose that and name it here. Rev B. Now this allows us to go ahead and back this up real quick. So we've just saved out another configuration, sort of, of the part. The last save as I want to mention is going to be the save as and open. And so it'll do similar what, to what we did last time, but it'll then open that waypoint copy up. So let's say we want to delete this. Now we're going to save as and continue. Or excuse me, save as, copy, and open. Rev C. So if we want to be working back and forth between the two, this is the option we'll use. And it just saves a, a bit of time rather than having to use one and open and close and, and things like that. There's another uh, save function in SOLIDWORKS that is very useful if we want to completely separate the files out from the ones we're working on. Say if we want to send to a customer or if we want to just back up a separate copy. The best way in SOLIDWORKS to do that for an assembly with different parts and components is to use the pack and go function. 
And this also saves configurations, model information, such as the motion studies, even simulation data. And um, you'll see that in just a moment here. So with this pack and go open dialog box, we can choose our different settings depending on what we want to include. Um, say we want to include drawings here. Um, we can include the toolbox components. In this case, there aren't any. So we'll leave that blank. Then we'll choose our location. And I'm just going to choose desktop and SolidWorks or assembly lab. Okay. So we'll save that out as such. Now it won't let us open this back up while the original assembly is open because they're named the exact same thing. You can also adjust that by including prefix or suffix. The SolidWorks export options are located in the same place as the save options we just looked at. So going up to the file menu, save as dropdown, we can look at this assembly and see what different save as file type options there are. SolidWorks is designed to work with a lot of different platforms and programs out there, such as other CAD platforms, and we can see that by looking to the neutral CAD file formats, such as Parasolid, iGES, and STEP. We can also save out as an image such as a JPEG or TIFF or even a Pro-E or Hoops file format. There's also additive manufacturing and rapid prototyping formats and we'll look at those in more detail right here. So choosing options we can look at this AMF format which is a big step for rapid prototyping as it includes things like materials, colors, and more information for the model than could be done from just an SDL format. You can also adjust the deviation of the distance that the mesh represents the actual curvature here and the angle between the planes of the triangles right here. So let's choose OK on that. So we're publishing to the new additive manufacturing file format, exporting, and we're going to save that out. Another place to access these rapid prototyping file formats, such as STL, VMRL, and AMF, is a Print 3D option from the File drop-down menu. And what this does, new for Windows 8, is actually skips the mesh repair step and directly creates a printable or creatable model format, which saves us tons of time in the long run.